Welcome, everyone. I'm uh, really happy finally to speak here. I've been organizing it for one and a half year and never gave a talk here. Really happy to give the first one. Uh, my name is Dimitri, and I'm an independent consultant. That's how I look on internet. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about MobX State Tree, which is an opinionated and transactional uh, powered by MobX state management for React. Uh, but first of all, can you raise your hands who is using Angular here? Okay. Uh, what about Vue.js? Okay. What about React? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, with React, which library are you using for the state management? Is it a Redux? Okay. What about MobX? Nobody's using MobX. Okay. Um, my story started three months ago when me, uh, with my team, we decided to start a new project. And as a base front-end technology, we decided to choose React one more time. So I've been using it for two years already, and it was always perfect. Uh, that was the stack that we decided to choose. So obviously, like Webpack, it's good for building, just for testing, React itself, Redux for the state management, and SaaS for the styling. And everything was good, except one thing. We always had kind of like a bad feelings about Redux. It's good, but in the same time, it's really, really simple. So for those who don't know what is uh, Redux, it's a state management library, uh, which allows you to store the whole state of your application inside the thing that is called state container. And to modify the state, you have plain objects uh, which called actions or like events in JavaScript. Those uh, actions contains the type and the payload which will affect your current state of the system. Uh, you have action creators which are uh, factories for those objects. You have some initial state which actually tells you what is the state of your whole application and how it will be initialized. And you have those functions which are called reducers which are simple functions that are taking the state or the initial state and the action that is happening right now and they are returning new state. So you have only four simple concepts, like primitives. And it's a bit too simple because like, first of all, we really didn't like the boilerplate. Each time that you have some sort of a new change you introduce into your app, you need to create all of those entities. You need to create the action that will change your application, you need to create the action creator which will allow you to generate those action, actions. Um, you have create the reducer which will change and it sounds like a huge boilerplate. And we decided in the team that we really want to have something that will auto-generate all that stuff because it's, it's really simple and like when you see the code you see like it must be a way how to auto-generate that and how to simplify it. The second thing is a type checking. Like we were not using any sort of, of type checking helpers like Flow or TypeScript. Uh, but in React, as you know, there is already a built-in type checking. Like with React prop types, you can already check something and it's really useful. And in Redux, you don't have it. And that's the shape of your like initial application state and it's fine until you notice that there is a typo. And you will spend like good 20 minutes just figuring out why it's crashing and you have a typo in one property and it's like in another part it doesn't just match. So we decided that we want to have the type checking and the initial shape checking for, for our state. The third thing was, which was bothering us is a verbose immutability. So Redux in, in, in its idea has the thing that the state is always immutable so you are not modifying the state, but you are just like creating each time the new copy. And there are multiple ways how to achieve it. In the current example, it just uses object assign to return the new state each time when there is any type of modification. There are multiple ways of achieving this. You can use spread operator, you can use the library called immutable.js, which gives you the possibility to create immutable data structures each time. But in real life, the immutability of Redux is just an implementation detail. You don't gain any benefits for you as a developer from it. Like, it just made because it's much easier for uh, Redux to propagate changes and to uh, 
make the reference comparisons, but for the developer experience, you always just need to create a new and new and new instances, which is too verbose. So we decided that we want to mutate the state. And there is a last problem which always bother everyone who is using Redux is code organization. I've been working on many Redux applications and that's like the most typical uh, folder structure. Like on the root level you will have actions, you will have reducers, and you will put initial uh, state and reducers into the reducer folder, probably in the same file, and then actions and action creators in the action folder. And then each time then you need to introduce new action into your application, you're going to those two folders, finding files, opening them, add in the action, add in the action creator, add in the reducer, initial state, and you're all the time switching between those files like iteratively. There are multiple things that you will notice as soon as your application gets bigger and bigger and bigger that doesn't scale well. And there are multiple approaches for solving that problem. Like first of all, people are going with a, uh, approach called page or scene based, where you split your reducers and actions and putting them into the folders based on routing. So like each page has their own reducers and their own state. Uh, another th approach called docs, and it's basically when you're uh, combining your uh, reducer action and action creators into one file and putting it close to your components. But also it's kind of hard to figure out, and we changed multiple times our strategy of, of of storing them. And we decided that we don't want to think each time like how to solve that problem. So we started to think about having a Redux in our project and it was like a big, big question. And at the time, the most popular uh, libraries for that was still Redux and MobX, which started to become like a big new thing. And good old Flux by Facebook was also a thing. And at that time, I've noticed that the MobX state tree got released version 1.0. And it was something really interesting because it was a mix of both MobX and Redux. And they took the idea which was really useful from Redux, that is a tree structure. So it's, it's really easy to locate all the parts of the state together. It has uh, initial state uh, type checking built in. It also has immutable and mutable uh, data at the same time. So it looks like it's immutable, but you actually can mutate the data, which is really cool. It has a pretty simple code structure and it's, it has a bit of uh, magic from MobX. So here is how the type definition look like. It has three parts, which is the model definition, which is the view definition, and which is the action definition. And here how it looks, the initial state, what we call in Redux initial state. Uh, it's called model definition in MobX state tree. So basically you are describing uh, the fields and their types or default values. And there are multiple primitive uh, types for that. You have string, number, date, boolean. There are also a couple of complex types, for example model, which allows you actually to nest one node into another, creating like a real tree structure. There are also arrays and maps, and that's how the root uh, type uh, will look like. So that's similar to store root in Redux. You just have the list of all your stores connected here. There are also a couple of utility types which are pretty useful. For example, like union, where you can join multiple types together. There is an enumeration which allows you to use one type or another. There is an optional type nullable type and immutable type. Uh, the second part of the, of the describing the, the model itself is views, what we call selectors in Redux. Those are the things that are helping you to kind of like filter data, getting the subsets of data, for example, like getting only completed to-do lists, uh, items. And there are two types of declaring those. The first type is by the JavaScript getters. So you're just creating a commuted property which will be calculated when you're calling it. And the second way is by using the function. So you can create really one-to-one -one, uh, analogy by, with, the, with the Redux selectors. And here how you call them. So the first one you just call it as a regular property and it will be calculated because of it's, it's a getter function. And the second one is just like a plain function. 
What about data mutation? Uh, in MobX state three, you're allowed to modify your data only when you're inside the same model. So when you're in the actions of the same model. If you're trying to modify the data outside of, of the model, you will get the exception. Which is pretty good because the data keeps the, it, it flow inside a particular model. Uh, also you have the asynchronous data uh, mutation support. So you can create an action which will be asynchronous in future, which uh, have like initialization points. And then at, at, at the same point, you're just calling asynchronous operation. And then you call inside uh, functions that are still declared in the same actions, those are the handlers, which will modify your state after the synchronous operation was finished. It also has the generic support out of the box, so you're free to use async await in future, and like there are no problems with that. And uh, they also have a couple of self-implemented actions already like pre-built into the MobX state tree, uh, which are basically live hooks similar to React live hooks. Uh, those are called whenever the node is getting uh, into the tree or out of the tree. And the particularly interesting one is after attach. So you're actually able to fire the action uh, whenever the node gets attached to your tree. So like everyone remembers those initialization in, in React or Redux or Angular when you need to like fetch all the data. This thing allows you to distribute those loadings between like each node and then like group all of them and have it on the root level, which is pretty useful. Uh, MobX state tree also have a couple of utility functions which uh, simplifies the life and working with the, with the tree itself. So for example, one called clone, it just simply cloning your uh, node in the, in the tree. Uh, others are get parent and get root, which are helping you to traverse the tree and get into the root node or like getting deeper in, in the tree. The one particularly interesting is called get env, and basically it returns you the preseted up environment. Uh, it's useful for the dependency injection. So you're able to set up something at the beginning of your state creation and then use it within the lifetime of the state. Um, so it's really similar to, to cre creating of the store in Redux, but as a second argument, you're just passing the map of injection. So you're able to create here things like a singleton, for example, like for fetching your data or like logging or mocking things. And it's, it's really useful and interesting because like here how you use it, you just inside your action, you're just calling get environment and you're getting the preset up environment and you have access to all your injections. And here you just like getting, for example, the logger. This is really useful for unit testing. Because like everyone had questions how to test dependencies in Redux, for example. Like in Angular it's solved because you have a dependency injection out of the box. But in Redux there were like tricks how to make it and it was not designed from the beginning. Those guys implemented it from the really, really beginning. Um, the last two methods which I want to point out is a get snapshot and apply snapshot, and those are responsible for the data serialization and deserialization. So with those methods, you are able to get the part of your tree or the whole tree as a JSON immediately, and you can store it, for example, in the local storage or like send it to the server or even send it to the different client, and then you will be able to restore it and have exactly the same state of the application anywhere else. Uh, because of that functionality exists, you have also a simplified data mapping. So whenever you are getting your asynchronous operation done and you are getting your result from the server, you don't need anymore to map it from the JSON from the server to your data structure. If it matches, it will map automatically. This magic. Um, the folder structure is also relatively simple. Uh, you just put everything into kind of like one folder and then you can uh, extract types that are repeating themselves. So it's relatively simple and it's not getting that huge. Uh, how do you connect it to React? It's also really, really simple and it's comparable to Redux. In Redux you have two functions, map state to props and map dispatch to props because your state and your actions are separated. 
here actions are inside the model. So you have like encapsulated them and you have mapping which looks exactly the same. So for example, here you have like the name mapping which came uh, in, in Redux, it comes from the map state to props. Here it's inside the state uh, and the actions which are also inside the state comparing to maps, uh, maps uh, dispatch to props. Uh, they also have like high order component to make it look nice when you're writing the code. So it's just called differently. In Redux it's called connect, here it's called inject. And it's, it's really simple to use. Plus, they have implemented the compatibility layer with Redux, so the transition is pretty smooth. You don't need even to rewrite the part which is making the mapping to your React part. It works out of the box. You just like plug it and you can reuse parts that are using Redux. It also have a lot more things like middleware for actions, references and identifiers for the data type to create a complex data structures, uh, patch changes, so instead of like sending the whole state change, you're just sending like a real JSON patches which you can apply on your changed state anywhere else. For sure they have a time traveling and because of it actually has a compatibility layer with Redux, you're able to use Redux extensions for the time traveling with MobX state tree and many other things are in the box. But I think it's enough for today, and I think I, I told enough for the really beginning, for the start, so you can try it, and if you will have questions, you can write me. Thank you everyone, and questions, please.